it's about mid-April or so in the springtime, and the year's still young, so there's not too many uh, Connecticut Farm Fresh products out. But the benefit about this time of year is we have our nice uh, maple syrups that was harvested throughout the winter. All the sap was collected from our um, on our property from our trees, and our friends process process the raw products. And then, as you see here, you have the finished maple syrup of the different grades. And then also, too, we have friends that process uh, beehives on our property and make the honey and the honey sticks that you see as well. Uh, a few other products that we have today are the fresh granola that is Connecticut made. And also, too, we make our own um, fresh cookies back at our, our stand. Um, all different varieties. They're always a blast with the students and the faculty. Um, they're always hot cakes. And then, now this time of year, people are getting ready to plant their gardens. It's still a little early and people are getting fooled with the warm weather that we're having right now. But what you can do right now is you could have hanging baskets and patio pots to decorate your house in the front, but you gotta make sure because of the cold weather at night, you have to bring them in. So that's what we see here today, some of the, the hanging baskets. And we have a few of the patio pots here as well and inside. Um, and then some people like decorations to put on their tables. And you see the small four inch pots here, the nice non-stop begonias, your dahlias, and even your geraniums, classic geraniums. pork CSAs. Uh, beefers, beef cows, are made for our consumption, whereas you have your dairy cow, they're obviously made to produce our milk. And when you eat a dairy cow, it doesn't have that nice flavor as the Angus does. So what great part about our, our beef CSA this year is we're actually using beef cattle uh, for the CSA. It's a mixture between uh, the Angus, classic Angus, um, that you see that makes the wonderful steaks and with the Belgian blue cattle. The great part about the Belgian blue cattle is um, their birthing process is very easy on, on the mothers, um, whereas the Angus not so much and now you combine the two hybrids and you have an easy birth for the mother and you have an excellent tasting meat. Now for our pork CSA, that you get your nice bacon breakfast meat all the way to your, your pork loins. Um, all the different variety of cuts that you see on the pig you can get uh, with the pork CSA. We have our classic vegetable version um, that has fruits and veggies in it and the great thing about this year is we're doing whole baskets and half portions as well so if you don't have a big family you can still get the CSA in the half portion. Um, that has your traditional um, cold weather veggies that you'll be seeing uh, coming soon in May and June, the early squashes, uh, the lettuces, the cabbage, the broccoli, raw, kale, all of those. And as we transition from the spring into summer, you get your classic summer vegetables, your early corn will start coming out, early peppers, and eventually all that we love are our tomatoes, the Connecticut tomatoes. And you have all your different varieties, your heirloom, your classic uh, beef steak, burpee boy, um, the nice tasty uh, grape tomatoes, the cherry tomatoes, and then as you move into the fall, you're going to have your fall squash, um, and then even some of the cold weather vegetables returning um, because of the, the nice cooler fall weather. exciting uh, seeing the growth over the past couple of years of the sustainability club here on campus and particularly my wife Kristen is, is the leader of that club and she does a lot of the work in putting Earth Day together. I think it's wonderful in the way it's uh, increasing awareness among students and faculty and staff and just to see everyone getting together um, and beginning to, to realize the importance of uh, maintaining a sustainable environment in which we live. Incredibly exciting and refreshing.
started a couple of gardens here on campus, so we have fun with that. And one is a more of an herb garden, and the other one is more of a sustainability garden where we're trying to plant perennials and uh, native species and trying to avoid uh, invasive species. And so we're trying to take some invasives out of that area too. Um, and that's at the Albert Schweitzer Institute, and in the the other the herb garden is the Christopher Becker Courtyard and Garden, which is right up next to our student center. Um, so I am hosting Earth Day and a farmer's market, just a one-day farmer's market here on campus today. And uh, we're having a great time. It looks like we have a good crowd of people. And we give flowers away to students, uh, to faculty and staff who visit. Uh, we have a critter's table. We have uh, environmental organizations here. Uh, and uh, we have vendors here who sell eco-friendly products. Um, the main reason that we were at Earth Day is because um, my sister's a graduate and I'm an undergrad right now. And um, we got into bead making about six months ago and decided that it would be a good idea to come out and, and show everyone that you can buy beads locally and um, that you can just make sure that the economy like within your town um, is still running. And, um, and we are both Wallingford residents. So we're giving away today, and this is called the Malabar spinach um, or Malabar. It's not a true spinach in the in the sense of, the, of how most people think of spinaches, but it is an edible leaf. Um, and there are two different varieties that I know of. One of them is a red Malabar, which has a pigmented stem, and it's a beautiful red stem, and it stays this red color and actually gets a more vibrant color uh, uh, through the summer. And the leaves are large and edible. You can pick them off right off the vine and eat them fresh, or you can cook them. Uh, and they're just they're just great. Now there are two different companies that I know of that sell them. Maybe more do. I don't know. Um, Pine Tree Garden Seeds and I think Johnny's catalog sells them too. Um, and I am so excited. I'm, I'm obsessed with this plant. <laughs> um, we planted along our um, along our chicken pen actually. Actually, which is where? Which is in, our, in my backyard. Which is in where? <laughs> which is well, in Wallingford. So um, right on the corner corner lot um, uh, of two different you know, intersecting streets. And so I have this great south-facing uh, yard for a garden. And part of that is a chicken run. And so I cover up my, ra my rather scraggly looking fence um, with this vine. Uh, and it's just a beautiful green wall by August. It's just marvelous. Um, you have to get this. You have to try it. It transplants beautifully. Um, it grows beautifully. It'll grow up anything. You can plant it at the base of a tree, and it will grow up the tree. Um, and, and so it's great. I and it's it. not considered an invasive species. It's not invasive. No, it does not survive the winter. 